is to figure out what we call your why. Now, maybe you've heard this before, but I'm going to tell you why this is so important. The why of why you start a business is essential. And the reason for that is people usually don't want to sit down and think about the deep reasons for starting their own business. And there's several of them. There could be creativity. You feel like you have creativity that you're not expressing at a job or in your career. Uh, autonomy. Some people need more autonomy than others, but autonomy is a really strong one where people want to be able to do what they want to do. And sometimes they feel like they can do it even better than the, the job or company they're working with right now. Some people want more flexibility. Maybe they don't want to work as many hours. Maybe they want different time uh, hours, maybe more at night, maybe more in the morning. Maybe they're more flexible at all different kinds of times throughout the week and their job just doesn't allow for that. Another one is financial reasons. Now, sometimes people are not as worried about the amount of money, but being able to get their value for what they put forward. But in the end, you have to start out with your why. If you have a strong why, then all the other pieces can come together. If you have a weak why you are doing this, then none of the other pieces will come together. Step number two is to do some research and brainstorming. Research means researching all of the different things that you're thinking about, putting them down on paper and just throwing, out, throwing them out there and then organizing them. So looking at the industry that you might be interested in, maybe products and or services. Is it a market that's trending? Is it a market that's strong? Is it a market that's saturated? Is it a growing market that's something that you're interested in? Are you good at something in that area? If you're not good, are you willing to hire the right people or to bring in the right people, whether it's consultants or uh, contractors or something like that in order to get the business to where it needs to be? Basically, researching is a preemptive strike. Are you inspired by the idea? Does it motivate you? Are you passionate about whether this product or service or both together is worthwhile? Does it have value in the marketplace? You see, because sometimes people have a great idea in their mind, and yet the marketplace doesn't really care about that idea. Or maybe the marketplace is just simply not ready, and it's too difficult and complicated and maybe even too expensive to bring it forward. So is this an idea that you feel like after doing the research and putting together all the pieces, is it something that you still want to move forward with? Or sometimes after doing deep research and spending your time looking at the marketplace, you might shift and change it a little bit. You might decide to do something a little bit different or maybe even radically different than you originally planned on. And that is why the research and the brainstorming at the beginning, putting it all together is so powerful. Okay, number three. Do you have a business plan? If not, number three is create a business plan. And by the way, hmm, let me see, I have my yellow sticky in my pen. I think I can write this business plan on a yellow sticky. Simplicity is huge, but having a business plan on a yellow sticky, that's not what we're talking about. And by the way, there's some great free templates right online. You can Google and search for them. I'll add a link if I remember, but there are free templates and they're fantastic. They give you an outline of what to do to write a business plan. And it's really simple to just go into Google or some other search engine and write, how do I write or how to write a business plan? And there's five to six very important pieces that you must cover. And if you don't know how to do them, take those individual ones and and just put in how to do that. And there'll be an array of uh, different articles and research papers on how to do that and templates. So a business plan is ultimately important for so many reasons. It's the groundwork of what you're going to do. It also is something that you can use if you need to get financing, investing of any kind. If you don't have a business plan, nobody in their right mind is going to invest in your company from a bank to a crowdfunding to a family member. Nobody would give you money. And even if they didn't give you money and it was coming from your own pocket, to have a business plan is essential. And as a matter of fact, if you don't have a business plan, you might as well not even begin to move forward because you can expect to fail. Speaking of business plans, one good place to get uh, some of this information and a good source for anybody starting out is Small Business Administration. And you can look online, it's really easy to find. It'll give you a slew of uh, information, resources, and in every state, 
different laws and links to, you know, from taxes and permits and licenses and all that important stuff that you'll need. Sometimes it's a little bit basic, but it's a great place to start. Okay, number four is your financial plan. Your financial plan includes a lot of different things, but for one thing, it's projections for the future. You must have a one, two, five-year and 10-year financial plan, a projection of what this company will do. That way, when you do go to investors or a bank or even for yourself, you know how to mark what you're doing and whether it's succeeding or not succeeding. But at the beginning, you have to have some way to measure what you are attempting to do to see if it's even worthwhile. And do you have the ability to have the costs stay low? So you've got to be able to look at your costs. For example, when you first start out, there are ways to keep your costs low in a small business. Some businesses require much more capital just to begin, and there's no way around that. But even the simple things from taxes and permits and licenses, from all the way up to capital goods and space, and whether it's online or it's mostly a brick and mortar, there's all these different costs that must be figured out depending on exactly the type of business you are going to run. There are also templates online specifically that allow you to customize all these different things depending on the type of business you are going to start. I strongly recommend getting a template. This has been done millions of times before you ever thought of running a business. There are simple templates out there that will make you see what you need to do to move forward. It's a great way to see what you're going to have to do in the future. Financial costs are very often one of the biggest problems in businesses and being underfunded and undercapitalized is often the reason a business fails. The reason this happens is because it wasn't planned correctly originally. What type of business structure are you going to have? This is very important when you start out. Are you going to have a sole proprietorship? Are you going to have an LLC? Or are you going to have some type of a corporation? All of these can be explained online and a much more detailed article or research can tell you exactly the type that you should be looking at. Now, every state is different. There's ease in moving into some of them. There's tax implications in moving into others. And of course, some are more important for larger companies than smaller companies. It's really important to start out with the type of legal structure that fits for what your goals are long term. So do the right amount of research upfront on this before you make a decision. Good idea to talk to either an attorney and or a CPA before you make this move. Okay, number five. This one's a big one, and people spend their entire lives just focusing on this one area of business, and there's a lot of different areas fit into this one area. What is going to be your marketing plan? You've got to have a deep, thorough marketing plan, and this starts from the pre-launch of your business. A lot of people think about it afterwards. It's a pre-launch plan that you have. Are you going to be business to business? Are you going to be business to customer? Are you going to have distributors, sales reps? What is your plan of rolling it out? How are you planning on la launching it? You need to have details because when it comes to the marketing plan, a lot of businesses will actually fail in marketing correctly. They'll either spend too much, spend too little, or be incredibly ineffective in their sales strategy. Are you going to be grassroots? Are you looking at advertising? And of course, nowadays, everybody says social media. Well, you might have to focus on social media, but not every single business can grow using social media. For some businesses, it's incredibly ineffective and it's a waste of time, never mind money. So what are you going to do for marketing? All right, this is one that could use its own video all in of itself, and maybe I'll do that. I could certainly break down each one of these, but we're trying to keep it simple for this video. Next step is your goals. You need short-term goals, you need medium and long-term goals. You need to have timelines, you need to have action steps. You've gotta have who is doing which one. So if there's somebody that's supposed to do one thing and somebody's supposed to do another, it has to be assigned correctly. If you're the entire business when it starts out, well then you need to prior prioritize your time and efforts. You need to figure out what you're good at and what you can do and what places you're wasting time and energy because it's so far outside of your wheelhouse that it will just sap your energy. Don't get stuck in that. If you don't write your goals down, if you don't physically write them down, you can expect to fail. 
You must write short-term, medium, and long-term goals. Otherwise, the business won't work. You'll also notice along the, along the term of using all of these different goals, you will be adapting them, revising them, changing them. Some of them will actually take you in a completely different direction after a period of time. You've got to be able to have goals, know where the target is, and then after shooting the arrow, you assess did the arrow go where you wanted it to go? How far off was it? And what you need to do to tweak it just right for the next time you shoot the arrow. Goals are vital for you to keep your business moving forward, whether you're small or huge. It doesn't make a difference. You can't move forward without them. Oh, here's a big one. Some of you will be really, really good at this from day one, and a lot of you will have a challenge. I'm going to tell you, if you don't organize everything, number seven, organize, create files, create lists, and a great place to do that is Google Docs. It's free, it's easy. I'm sure there's some other good ones out there, but you've got to organize everything into files. That way, when you first start, you go and you get an idea and you say, where would I put that later on? What do I, how do I look that up? When do I do research on that? Take that, throw it into a Google Doc, make sure you title it something that is applicable to that. Uh, type of file and that way you can always go back to it you can always change it add stuff take it out but it's just a really good source to organize big companies have teams of people that organize things for them the best organizers are the ones that keep the ground roots going and growing you've got to have dreamers you've got to have the idea of coming up with this massive incredible awesome um, unbelievable new idea or an adaptation of another idea. Of course you have to have that. But if you're just starting out, you have to be the organizer. You've got to keep it together. So that way, when you have a list, you can actually check off what you've done, what you need to do, uh, whether that has to get taken off the list because it's not important anymore. But we have to have lists, some way organizing all your steps, and then prioritize and reprioritize and then change it and revise it. You've got to be organized. Okay, so those are the seven steps to start your own business. Let's get a discussion started, but before we do, don't forget, we have the bonus. I know, super excited. All right, so here's the bonus. Uh, there's a lot more to starting a business, of course. The bonus though, I would say, and it's really important is this. You've got to understand that you will have ongoing training. You're going to be looking for assistance, reading, updating information, maybe schooling, courses, certifications, connecting with mentors, business groups. Connect with other entrepreneurs that are thinking the same way, whether it's online, offline, or both. Being connected to other people that think this way is vital. It is so many times I've seen things that I've looked for, businesses that I've consulted with. Somebody will be banging their head and they'll be looking for something, a new supplier, a new way to do an operation or some way to hire the right people or the right book or article or strategy or something. And I'll get a question when I'm at, a, uh, at consulting at a job or on the phone and it will take me two seconds to give them the answer because I had the answer and for them it was driving them crazy what to look for. They were spending hours, days, sometimes weeks, sometimes money that they spent over and over trying to consult with the right people or find the right people or whatever else it might be. So whatever you do, make sure you connect with people that are also entrepreneurs. They are a wealth of information and so are you. There's probably somebody that needs your help that some of the questions that they would have is just absolutely common sense to you. That means there's probably somebody that has a ton of information that you could use and you probably, if you connected, could help each other. So if nothing else, think about finding a mentor, being a mentor, joining groups, Sometimes it costs money to do things and get extra training and certifications and memberships and all kinds of stuff, hiring consultants, and sometimes it's absolutely free. But if nothing else, stay connected to positive entrepreneurs.